Welcome options traders. In this video, I wanted to share another technical indicator with you, Bollinger Percent B. You might be thinking, we've seen that name before with Bollinger Bands, and you're exactly right. You're going to find out that Bollinger Percent B is Bollinger Bands. It's just a different way of presenting the information. So if you want all of the ins and outs and how to read Bollinger Bands and details for what they are, I will refer you back to the video on Bollinger Bands. But let me at least show you what Bollinger Percent B is and why it might be useful. First of all, recall that Bollinger Bands are a series of three lines that are overlaid on top of your price chart. It is an upper study, which again just means that those technicals are going to be overlaid on top of your actual candlesticks like you're seeing here. There is a center line, and that is a moving average of the stock prices. Generally, we're going to look back 20 periods, whether it's 20 days, 20 minutes, 20 weeks, whatever, we're going to look back 20 periods to get that average price. And from that center line, we're going to calculate an upper and a lower band, which are simply two standard deviations away from that center price. So for example, down here, here is your center line, and this would be the average of those stock prices over the past 20 days. And then we would see an upper line, that's just two standard deviations above that average. And then we would also see a lower band or a lower line down here. That's two standard deviations below. So that was Bollinger Bands. You get the series of bands directly overlaid on top of your prices. Well, Bollinger B gives the same information, but it's a lower study. And what it does, it shows where the current stock price is in relation to the upper and lower band. So just loosely speaking, if the stock price is near that upper band, Bollinger Percent B is going to give you a high reading. If it's toward the lower band, Bollinger Percent B is going to give you a low reading. And if those stock prices are in the center, it's going to give you a neutral reading. So how does it do that? Well, here's the formula for Percent B. We're going to take the current stock price minus the low band. Keep in mind when I say the low band, it's really a stock price. It's what is the stock price at that low band. And we're going to divide that value by the high band minus the low band. Again, the high band being the stock price at that higher band, and the low band being the stock price at that lower level. For the people who have been reviewing some of these technical videos, you're probably thinking, this looks a lot like another one in the past. And you're correct. That was stochastics. And when we looked at stochastics, we had what was called a percent K line. And take a look at the formula here. Close minus the low. Close being the current stock price. And then for percent B, we divide it by the high band minus the low band. Look what we do for percent K. High price minus the low price. Now for percent K, yes, we do multiply by this 100 over here, but that was just to get rid of the decimal point. But you can see that the idea is exactly the same. So if you understand stochastics, you will instantly understand percent B. It's the same idea just applied to Bollinger Bands. So just to clarify, you've seen this diagram before in stochastics. Let's say that over the past 20 days that the stock had a low of 100 and had a high of 110. And right now the current stock price is 105. What is percent B going to give us for a reading? Well, look at what the formula tells you. It says take the current stock price, 105, and subtract off the low band, which remember is just a value down here, is 100. 105 minus 100 is 5, and we will divide that by the high band minus the low band. So 110 minus 100 is 10, and that gives us a reading of 0.5. And you're going to find that any time the current stock price is halfway between those Bollinger Bands, you will see a reading of one half. On the other hand, what will happen if the current stock price is up here at the high? Let's say this is the actual stock price as well. We're going to take the price minus the low band, so that's going to be 10, and we're going to divide that by the high band, 110, minus the low band of 100. So 10 divided by 10 equals 1. Anytime your current stock price is equal to the high, you're going to see that percent B will give you a reading of 1. And then finally, what will happen if the stock is here at the low? Let's say the current stock price is down here at 100, 
Percent B says take the current stock price, which is 100, minus the low band, which is also 100. That gives us zero. And we will divide that by the high band minus the low, which once again is 10. So zero divided by anything is zero. So if the current stock price is on that lower band, you will get a reading of zero. So here are five key reference points that you should understand. Percent B equals one if the current stock price is at the high band. Percent B will equal zero if the current stock price is at the low band. On the other hand, percent B can actually go outside of these ranges. Remember, Bollinger Bands, we can see the stock price might actually exceed two standard deviations on the high side or fall below minus two on the low side. Same thing here. So percent B is greater than one if the current stock price is above your high band. And percent B is less than one if the price is below the low band. And then finally, as I showed previously, percent B will equal one half if the price equals the center band. And obviously you can get readings in between here. Most of the time you're going to see the readings will be between 0.5 and one or between 0.5 and zero. Because again, most of the time the stock will be between those upper and lower bands. Let's now move over to the E-Trade platform and take a look at Bollinger Bands compared to Bollinger Percent B. So here we are in the E-Trade platform and let's put the Bollinger Bands on for comparison. So we go to Studies, right there, Bollinger Bands. I'm going to just leave the color defaults here. Look back period, standard is 20 periods. Two standard deviations is also our default. So I'm just gonna leave those colors and those defaults on there. This is exactly the graph that we saw when we looked at Bollinger Bands. Now let's go and put on percent B. I come up here to studies, and if I don't have them in my most used up here, I would need to click on all studies, look for the Bs, and right there is percent B. Going to click there, same defaults as before, shouldn't be any surprise, look back period is 20 periods, standard deviations is two. They do give us the ability to change the overbought and oversold levels. So in this platform, they actually multiply by 100. So in the previous slides I showed where the upper band would be one, they actually multiply it very much like they do with stochastics. So you're actually gonna see 100 if it's touching the upper band. You will see zero if it's touching the lower. So I can set some zones on my chart if I wanna look where overbought and oversold levels may be. Choose save. And let's go ahead and raise this up so we can get a better look at it. So over here on the right, you can see that the bottom line here is at zero, and the upper one is at 100. So we're looking at Amazon, and let's just take a look at some points here on the graph. First one that stands out right here, see these five candles on the bottom that are hanging below the lower band? Look directly below. Bollinger percent B shows that the indicator here is below zero, and it shades it in gray just to give you a nice visual. Over here, you can see that the stock price was actually above the upper two standard deviation band, and that corresponds to readings above one or 100 for this platform, again, shaded in gray right here. If we see that the stock is right on the line, you see that little candle sitting right on that center line, you're going to get a reading right at one half. So as you can see, Bollinger Percent B doesn't give you any different information from Bollinger Bands. So why use them? Well, the main thing that you're going to find them helpful for is you might have your upper studies here loaded down with things like moving averages and all of the kinds of studies. And Bollinger Bands can make it kind of confusing because you've got these three different lines going on on top of moving averages. So for those times, you might want to delete your Bollinger Bands and just look at percent B. Conversely, maybe you've got a lot of lower studies and your upper chart here is fairly clean, you might wanna put Bollinger Bands on and get rid of percent B. So if you have your Bollinger Bands removed, let's go ahead and delete them here. It becomes very easy, let's pull up a different ticker symbol. I'll go to Apple. So now I don't have Bollinger Bands on my chart, but what can I tell? I can tell right here that these candles were above the two standard deviation band because my percent B line is above one, or in this platform, above 100. I can tell that these prices in here were just about between the upper and lower band because my reading is right here at a half. 
I can also tell that these stock prices in here were below the lower band because it actually sits below zero. So again, it doesn't give you any different information. It's just a different way to read it. But now you have a different way of displaying and reading Bollinger Bands. And if you'd like to know more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course at optionsa-z.com. You can also join us on the Facebook trading group Options A to Z, free website, lots of great information, free videos, market commentary. If you're new to options and looking for a great way to get started, please join us at Options A to Z Facebook trading group. We'd love to see you there.